All the way from the Musicians Institute of Hollywood, we have with us Mo Benjamins. Popularly, you know, he's known as Mo Benjamins, but born Mohammed Ibrahim, if I got that correct, Moses right? Ibrahim. Moses Ibrahim. Thank yes. you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm very curious as to why you, you chose the Benjamins. Benjamin add. is my middle name. Oh, great. Yeah, I was yeah. just thinking of, you know, the Benjamins. Yeah. I think of money. <laughs> <laughs> no. Good to have you. Good to, thank you for having and, me. And, you know, from the reports that we have, you recently relocated back to Nigeria to yes. pursue your career in yes. music. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, I was in LA uh, studying music and um, I graduated in 2016 with a degree in vocal performance. And I decided to come back because of how, you know, the thriving industry here in Nigeria is. So I decided to, you know, come back and just try to, you know, contribute my own sound to the industry. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so now I, I just watched your video. By the way, it was awesome. Great Thank song. You. And I Thank love you. your voice. Thank you very much. But now, are you, um, what's your, your take on the commercialization of music right now? Mm -hmm. And you know, your stance of the kind of music you make, because to me, if it's mature music, I love it right now. But okay. the thing is, are you concerned about the acceptance of your style of music? Um, I feel like sometimes we underestimate the Nigerians' listening palette. I feel like Nigerians are capable of listening to different types of music. Like, if you go for, like, a buffet, you just don't want to eat amala. You eat rice, you eat, you know. And I feel like we should, you know, give Nigerians the opportunity to listen to different kinds of music. It doesn't always have to be what is commercialized or what, you know, Afrobeat mm. is. I feel like Nigerians can actually, you know, listen to music that... and, and um, see talent and see stuff that is different and really like appreciate different sounds of music. I so we're so. moving beyond, we know the street has its sound and yeah. we, there's an assumption that everybody wants the street sound, but we're mm -hmm. beginning to see a rise in alternative music yes, as well. Yes, so yes, kudos yes. to everybody who's going ahead and making a way there. Yeah. What genre would you um, classify yourself and the type of music you do? Um, I'll see my music as alternative Afro pop, Afro soul. Okay. Yes. Mm. All right. And who would you say are your key influences in Nigeria? In Nigeria, oh man, uh, I was influenced by, you know, definitely Fela Kuti for sure, Femi Kuti, uh, Labaja, um, Whiskey. I like, I, like, I like all types of music, but, you know, I always go back to the legends because I feel like they have so much knowledge and they are the ones that pioneered this whole Afrobeat movement. So I really like all the sounds. Why did you choose to study music? Why not something else? Why not do the general thing like myself and Olive? We studied yeah. law mm -hmm. and then we decided to do media later in yeah. our lives. <laughs> so why, why music? I actually do have a bachelor's in public policy. Oh, nice. Yes, and then I realized, well, that's not what I want to do. I want to do music. And fortunately enough for me, I have parents that support us. So I had to, you know, follow my dreams and go and study music. Oh, so let's yes. talk about your first single, yeah. Sing or Swim. Yes. Tell us about it. What led to the writing yeah. up until the production of the video? Yeah, Sink or Swim is very, very, you know, special to me because it's a, it's a song that really, like, describes my life re uh, right now. Taking a leap of faith and coming back home, pursuing music and, you know, really following after your dreams. I feel like the song really talks about the two multi-faced choices life gives us when you're taking that leap of faith to pursuing your dreams. You either sink or swim, you either go for it or you fail. So yeah, that's where the music inspiration comes and from. And then the video, when I saw the video, I really like what you did yeah. there. I don't know, it gave me some South African type feel. Yeah, you know, yeah. The whole dancing on the yeah. street. Yeah. It reminded me of um, this skeleton that's no matter where you go. I feel like yeah. I got that South African vibe from yeah, it. So yeah. tell us about who shot your video, you know, mm -hmm. how long it took to shoot your video yeah. and everything that happened behind the scenes that we yeah. don't get to see on camera. Yeah. Okay, first of all, the video was directed by my great friend, Blessing Uzi. She's a director here in Lagos. She has done uh, videos for, like, Kobams as well, so she really knows what she's up to. And um, we shot the video in Abuja. I was very excited about that. I wanted to do a video in my hometown where I grew up in Abuja. Show people, like, how Abuja is beautiful. Show the different scenarios. Like, we had, like, you know, the train scene and, you know, the walking scene. And obviously, I love like showing African culture with the dancing and the tribal uh, makeup from like the dancers and stuff. So that's where it took us one day to shoot the video. We started in the morning and then we ended up like till like nine at night. So it was like a long day shoot, but it went well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so have you faced any challenges since you've started your music career in Nigeria? <sighs> yes, <laughs> there are so many challenges coming back home because of how the industry is set up. And you guys were talking about this earlier on with YG and what she's complaining about. And um, I feel like because there's no structure in the industry, you don't really know how to go about things or, you know, who to talk to, how to place your music, how to get radio played. It's, it's very challenging, especially for exactly for alternative artists as well. You, you, you don't really know how to go about things, but you just have to press on through and, you know, 
give people the opportunity to just listen to different kinds of music. I think that's where it starts from. And then, you know, just, just press through and see how you can be successful with doing yourself. All right. Our yeah. thoughts, you know, our prayers and our support is with you. Thank We're hoping you. that you would, you would swim and not yes. sink <laughs> yes. in this industry. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about your fashion style. I noticed you have yeah. a very unique fashion sense. I mm. saw that in your video yeah. and I'm seeing that now. Yeah. And I think your staple is your hat. Yes. Tell us the origin <laughs> of this hat. Um, when I was in LA, I think these hats came popular like about like three, four years ago and I saw like different artists like in LA, like Afro soul artists like working the hats and I was like, yo, I need to get these hats and like start making it like my signature thing. So I've been rocking the hats, but I also love African stuff. So you always see me like all these like shirts that have, you know, all these prince. like prints, African prints, you know. People say people call it the Altair fashion vibes or whatever. In this in this day and age, I hear that if yeah. you mix nylon and you mix cardboard, um, cardboard, cardboard, is it what, what's it called? Cardboard paper, yeah. Cardboard paper. Nylon cardboard paper and you have yeah. marker and ink on it. Everybody would have started altering. Because everybody's trying to do alternative yeah. fashion. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself, you know. Mm. Who is Mo Benjamin? Where yeah. are you from? Yeah. Well, I was born in Joss, Plateau State. Uh, my dad was from Nashua State. My mom is from Karu State. I was raised partly in Jos and then partly in Abuja. So you're a total northerner. Very, very, very much northerner. I speak Hausa, <laughs> yes. And um, please just tell me you love Kilishi too. I love Kilishi. Okay. Yes, you. I love Kilishi. Do you do you love uh, Farad and Onu? No, I don't like Farad. Don't like Farad. Well, I just oh, like Kilishi. Oh. The way he looks in the bottle. Wow, but it's so good. I'm not much of a yogurt person. Maybe okay. that's why. I only recently started liking frozen yeah. yogurt. Fred, We're definitely dope. going to put you on the spot. You're going to yeah. say something in Alsa, and then we'll wrap up the show with your okay. music video. Are we game? <laughs> okay. So introduce yourself. Tell Nigerians what to expect of you, mm -hmm. you know, and tell them to keep watching Hello Nigeria yeah. in Alsa. Um, Alsa is really bad, but Snanamo, Benjamin, Ni Artis, Ni. I want I'm <laughs> speaking English. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My answer is really bad. I can hear more than I can speak. Okay. So yeah. when I ask you in a jail, sir? In a jail, sir. Kadankada. 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 Uh, uh, <laughs> for your mind, only. Seriously. For my actual mind. Go <laughs> hide your pants. All right, that's yeah. all we have. Thank you so much, Mo, for joining us. Thank How you people follow your social media? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Mo Benjamin Music and Twitter at Mo Benjamin Music. I can't wait for you to blow so that we'll be like, <laughs> you know, when he started, yeah. we'll be a part of the story. <laughs> so even if he's made like five million inside, we deserve exactly. one million. Exactly. According to Stephanie, a dollar of five percent. <laughs> and you're not the lady that made little success famous. <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our Ugon get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.